Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam. In this video I'm going to explain the databases concepts, I'm going to explain what is Amazon RDS and what is Amazon DB and all the concepts that you need to understand for the exam. So let's get started with uh, Amazon RDS which stands for Relational Database Service. It's a managed service by AWS. It supports all the different, you know, relational databases such as Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres, Oracle, MariaDB, MySQL, and Amazon Aurora, which is um, the Amazon proprietary MySQL and Postgres um, compatible database. As always, since it's like a managed service, it has different features that are going to be useful to know for the exam. So it has automatic failover, multi availability zone deployment, automated backups, and uh, I'm going to explain all of this later. And um, it's important to know, which uh, of course is the main use case for relational databases, that RDS is used for OLTP transactions. So it's online transaction processing, which basically is a database that is needed for use cases such as, you know, web application, this kind of stuff. If there is um, a use case or a question on exam that asks for um, data analytics for like huge amount of data, you want to go with OLAP, which is online uh, analytic processing. And the uh, service uh, can help you with that is Redshift, but I'm going to cover Redshift in another video. So now we're going to focus on OLTP databases. And um, the first features that I want to explain you on, this is important to know for the exam the difference between multi availability zone and read replica. So multi availability zone basically creates an exact copy of your database in another availability zone in the same region. And this is like a synced copy, meaning that every write is synced with the other copies. This is not async, read replica are async. This is a sync copy. So remember that this feature uh, basically is a synchronized copy of your database in another, in another availability zone. You can configure multi availability zone in all databases except for Aurora because Aurora has multi availability zone built in, meaning that it's not possible to launch an Aurora cluster without a multi availability zone enabled. So why we need multi availability zone? What happens in a failure in, in you know in a failure or maintenance scenario? Basically, AWS will detect you and will detect it for you, and it's gonna apply a DNS, DNS failover to the stand copy. Meaning that when you create when you create a database with RDS, basically Amazon is gonna give you the DNS, so the URL where you want to connect from your web server, for example, the username and password. It doesn't give you the, an IP address. So what happens if there is like a failure or a maintenance scenario? This DNS will basically change change the instance where it's pointing to the to the copy in the in the other availability zone. So this change is done by AWS. You don't need to do anything, and um, is be handled by uh, by AWS for you. Remember, the multi availability zone is for disaster recovery. It's not for improving performance. So. For improving performance, we're gonna we're gonna use rate replicas or caching. Multi availability zone is only for disaster recovery. Remember this because they're gonna try to trick you with like questions on improving performance or disaster recovery, and they're gonna tell you to use this and that, like multi availability zone for improving performance is not the right answer. So multi availability zone is only for disaster recovery, not for improving performance. Now let's go on the read replica. So read replica are basically copy of your database. These are like async copy. So there can be a little uh, delay between the data of your primary uh, copy and the read replica. The idea is that it takes off the load from your primary database. So you, at the application level, you can decide if you have um, a read heavy application to use a, a read replica to query the database. It can be on the same or different ability zone or like even different region. You can configure a different region for the read replica. Each read replica has its own DNS endpoint. So it's up to you on your application level to decide to which DNS endpoint, meaning to which read replica you want to do your queries. It's only for scaling and improving read performance. It's not for disaster recovery. It requires automatic backups and it can be up to five read replicas for the uh, databases. So remember, it's very important to remember, as I said, I want to say it again, but the read replica is for scaling, for improving performance on reads. And it's not for disaster recovery. For disaster recovery, you need multi availability zone. Now, Amazon Aurora. So Amazon Aurora is a MySQL and Postgres compatible database, Amazon proprietary, meaning this is the technology 
uh, under the scene is Amazon proprietary and is up to five times better performance of MySQL. Sorry, here there's a typo and three times better than uh, PostgreSQL. Remember this. Uh, you don't need to remember these numbers, actually, but uh, remember that uh, on the exam, when there is an answer with Amazon Aurora, Amazon tends to prefer the answers with Aurora because they want to, of course, give advantage to that technology. As I said, when you launch uh, Aurora, it's going to have two copies of your data in each availability zone with a minimum of three availability zones. So the multi-AZ is already embedded when you launch your database with Aurora. So with uh, two copies of your data in each availability zone with a minimum of three availability zones, you have a total of six copies of your data by design. And it's designed to survive the loss of two copies of data. So Aurora, of course, supports the read replicas and it's up to 15 read replicas. If you use Amazon Aurora, if you use like MySQL replicas, it's going to be up to five and with Postgres is up to three. So here these are type of the, the number is three. Um, automatic backups are always enabled for uh, Amazon Aurora. And there is also this new feature called Aurora Serverless, which is basically a serverless database. And the clusters um, automatic startup, shutdown, and scale based on your application need. It's very useful when you have unpredictable, unpredictable workloads, or maybe when you're starting a new application, you don't know, like, you know, the amount of, the amount of, um, the amount of memory and also instance that you need for like a RDS database. Maybe you want to go with uh, Amazon serverless and have a full service application. So remember this when you have like questions asking you for actually questions saying unpredictable workloads and maybe with um, less maintenance solution, uh, Aurora serverless is um, a very good option. Now let's leave the SQL, let's say world, the relational, relational world and let's go on NoSQL database. And of course, service here is Amazon DynamoDB. I hope you know DynamoDB. I made like uh, more than 10 video videos about it. I'm gonna link those in the description. I think it's very useful to know DynamoDB and all uh, his features, both for the exam and both for your like knowledge when you're developing a new application, because it has very, it's very, very useful for like, especially serverless application. So Amazon DynamoDB is um, a NoSQL database fully managed by AWS is a document and key value data models. It's spread across three different availability zones by default. Uh, you have different pricing can be by per request or provision capacity. So with provision capacity, you basically allocate read and writes you need. Per request, you basically pay per request. I made a video about it, like what is a provision capacity. I'm gonna link uh, the video here on top on the top right. Encryption is um, at rest using KMS, which is uh, the key manager service of AWS. You can control the access of it of DynamoDB using IAM policies and roles. Uh, Amazon DynamoDB doesn't give you like you know a DNS URL where you connect, but it's fully accessible through API. So that is very useful. As I said, when you use Lambda and DynamoDB together, it integrates by default with CloudWatch, uh, which is the logs uh, service for AWS and CloudTrail. So let's see the consistency model of DynamoDB. DynamoDB consists like both eventually a strong consistent read. So eventually consistent reads, basically the consistency across the copies is reached within seconds. So that is, this is the best option for high performance and it's also the cheapest option. If you want and you need strong consistent reads, you can do that by setting the, it's like a value on the uh, API request and the read returns a result that is reflected to the old write received from the database. This of course is a little bit more expensive. I think for 90% of use case, you are good with the eventual uh, reads. So DynamoDB, has, as I said, has a very high performance. So usually you can get data within milliseconds, but if your application needs like um, a performance improvement and you can add this in memory cache for DynamoDB, it's called DynamoDB Accelerator or DAX and it reduces the request time from milliseconds to microseconds. It has a 10 pair performance improvement. You, you're gonna pay for this by the hour. There is no, there is no need to change anything on the up level, meaning that you need to change as we were doing here with the real replicas. Here is all handled just by the uh, API, so it's handled by activating the DynamoDB accelerator on your uh, AWS console. DynamoDB also supports transactions. So if you need like uh, ACI requirements, which is like, you know, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, you can use DynamoDB transaction. So if you see a question when they ask you for an app that needs to update multiple items as part of a single transaction, you should just think about DynamoDB transactions. 
uh, in terms of backups, he does backups at any time. There is no impact at all on the performance. And he's also, he supports point in time recovery, meaning that you, rest, you can restore any point in time in the last 35 days. It protects against accidental rights and death as well. And it's all handled by DynamoDB, AWS. You don't need to do anything. That's that's totally great. Now, another another topic that can uh, come out on the exam is DynamoDB Stream. So Streams, and I also made a video about it. I'm going to link it here. Is every time there is a change on the table, the streams will trigger an event. You can combine this, uh, especially with Lambda. So let's say there is a use case when you want to react to changes on a database. And they say every time there is a change, there is a write or an update or a delete in a database, you want to trigger an action. This is your your service. So it's not be streams. You can just link it to, to an AWS Lambda and uh, do everything that you want with your, with the change you're going to receive from the event. Last thing that I want to talk about global is uh, about DynamoDB is global tables, which basically it gives you the uh, opportunity to replicate a table in another region. And it's based on DynamoDB stream. So what happens is that you have uh, multi-region redundancy and um, it needs DynamoDB streams because basically every time there is a change in terms of like insert, update, delete, the DynamoDB streams is going to replicate the data in another table in another region. So the replication latency is under one second and it is great because you can basically, for use cases when you have a um, company that wants to expand the database in another region, you can just enable global table with DynamoDB and that's done. All right, I think this was the uh, introduction for the databases. Now let's move to the exam questions. All right, let's start with the exam questions. So first question, your company wants to have a fully managed MySQL compatible database. Which of the following engine has the best throughput? So here you say MySQL best throughput. I think the answer should be Aurora because uh, it's the best option when we want to have a managed MySQL compatible database. MySQL is like, um, has is on performance, DynamoDB is not uh, SQL, Redshift is not uh, is not for OLTP transactions, so you have to go with uh, Amazon Aurora. Easy one. Right, second one. A company has been acquired by a big corporate. During the transition, they discovered that the RDS MySQL database is not encrypted. The instance has a read replica in the same AWS region, which is also not encrypted. You need to fix the issue. What is the proper way to add encryption to the instance and his read replicas? Okay, so here we have to add encryption to the database and also to the read replica. The concept is similar to what you do with e EBS. So you basically have to create a snapshot. Then from the snapshot, you create uh, a new DB instance from the snapshot with the encryption uh, option checked. And you do the same thing with the read replica. So we need to find an answer that says this thing. So encrypted DB instance, launch a new replica and the replicas uh, encrypted automatically. This is not possible because you need to do, you need to create a, a snapshot before. Create a DB snapshot from the instance, copy the DB snapshot with encryption enabled. Restore the new DB instance from the new encrypted snapshot and configure a replica in the new database instance. That's the right approach. Yeah, that's the right answer. Let's see the other ones. Create a DB snapshot from the RDS instance and encrypt the new created snapshot or launch a new instance and it's replica from the snapshot. This is not um, the right answer, as I said, because you need to because you need to copy the snapshot first. Promote read replica to be a standalone instance and encrypt. This is not possible at all. All right, next question. Your company has set up data on DynamoDB. Okay, there is a requirement to expand to two different other location and you want to ensure that the latency for the data retrieval is at least for the new regions. Which of the following uh, can help? So here we want to expand to new region and the answer is global tables. So we have to find something like that. Place a cloud from distribution in front of the database. This is not, uh, I don't think it's possible and it's not even useful. Enable multi as a for DynamoDB. This is not uh, uh, possible DynamoDB. DynamoDB has uh, multi availability zone by default. Global table is the uh, right answer. And also placing elastic cache doesn't make sense at all for this use case because we want to expand in region. So with global tables, as I said, you have latency under one second and you can span to, to different regions. You have the following architecture in AWS EC2 instances behind the 
en el ASTIC Load Balancer Databases Host in RDS. Performance of the database has been slower due to the high number of read requests. Okay. Which improvements can you make? Choose two. So here we want to improve read requests. So we can use read replica. Uh, so add read replica to the primary database to offload read traffic. That's correct. And then we need to also find another option. Use Elastic Cache in front of the database. This is another good option because basically you can... So when you, when you add a cache in front of the database, you want to avoid to go to the database for, you know, query that are more popular. So the query you want, you can query, you can cache those query that uh, are more asked by your uh, application and avoid going to um, query the database. Using CloudFront in front of the database doesn't make sense at all and use another B to offload the reads, it doesn't make sense uh, as well. So next question, an application is using DynamoDB in one region. You want to develop a second application that will need to retrieve the new record written to DynamoDB table every hour, process the updates accordingly. What will be the ideal strategy to ensure that the second app gets the relevant changes from DynamoDB table? Okay, so here we have to use DynamoDB streams because as I said, streams gets uh, events for, for every like write, update, delete in the DynamoDB table. So let's see the answers. A timestamp for each record is scanned. The entire is not a good approach at all. Create a second DynamoDB table with the record modifying the last hour. This is not a good option as well. Use DynamoDB streams to monitor the changes in the DynamoDB table. That's the answer we were looking for. And using CloudWatch event to trigger a Lambda function every hour is not, it's not ideal really. So yeah, the answer is C. All right, next question. The company you work for has a database deployed in RDS and they have just created a read replica to offload the read requests. After the debugging, you realize that sometimes queries show stale data, okay, so like not up to date data. What could be the reason? The read replica has not been created properly. No, the backup of the database has not been enabled, doesn't make sense. Read replica has a replication lag, that's the, that's the answer. As we said, read replica has um, an async synchronization with the primary database so that sometimes can happen that the query show like all data and that's the right answer multi az doesn't doesn't make sense in this in this scenario okay next question your company has multiple rds instances your cto has asked you to disable automated backups to save on cost okay if you disable automated backups what are you compromising on so let's see the answer nothing in particular you are saving cost no Nothing because you can still take manual backups. This is true that you can take manual backups, but you are compromising on the, yes, on this one, on the point in time recovery, because without uh, automated backups, which has like, you know, incremental backups, you are disabling basically the point in time recovery. And answer D, you're not allowed to disable automated backups in RDS. This is not true, you can do it. All right, last question is, you've been hired by a startup that wants to use DynamoDB. During the design stage, you have to provide a strategy that is optimal for high read and writes. Which of the following would you consider? So use partition key with a large number of distinct value. That's uh, a good answer. Using partition key with a, sorry, with a small of distinct number of distinct value. Sorry, I forgot the word here. This is not uh, an ideal answer. Use partition keys with the string data type only. This doesn't make sense at all. Consider using a composite primary key. This doesn't make sense as well. So the answer is this one. And um, I also made a video about it, but the idea is that if we use a partition key with a large number of distinct values, the uh, partition on the NLB are going to improve both reads and writes. So it's optimal to use large number of uh, distinct values when you design your DynamoDB table. All right, that was all for this uh, video. I hope it was useful with the information also for the AWS questions. Let me know what you think in the comments and thanks again for watching. See you on the next one. Cheers.